Before we get into today's Dolphins mailbag, a question for you guys. Who is your favorite Dolphins player of all time? Betting will get a lot of Dan Marino comments in there, but plenty of awesome options, especially the further back you go. Lots of great players. Sound off for me in the comments section. First up from Chris Shepard. What will a Tua contract extension look like? It's a really good question. Mostly because the only correct answer is, don't know. All depends on how this year plays out for Tua. It doesn't sound like either side is really that close to getting or pushing for a deal done right now. We'll see how Tua fares this year. And I would even argue less so from an on-field perspective of like how good is he going to be this year. He was very good last year. You know, he was, I think, playing at a top 10 quarterback level. And given that the MVP often goes to the guy who exceeds expectations the most, he would have been in the running had it not been for the concussions. But he has to actually stay healthy. It's very tough to pay a quarterback with the way the market is right now in the event of injury concerns. Justin Herbert has reset the market in the same draft class, by the way, as to it, $52.5 million. Joe Burrow will beat everybody in the coming days or weeks or whenever. Uh, Aaron Rodgers did take a pay cut, uh, kind of a substantial one, so he actually might be back down out of the top 10, which leaves you know, Stafford and uh, Daniel Jones and, and Dak Prescott up a little bit higher in that currently tied for 10th spot. But if Tua stays healthy, if he plays like he did last year, if the Dolphins make and or win playoff games, he's going to be in that 45 to $55 million per year price tag range. The Mahomes deal is an outlier, but seriously, what has Kyler Murray done? What has Deshaun Watson done to justify those deals? Deshaun had some decent success in Houston. Kyler Murray had one of the worst playoff games I've ever seen, then got hurt. Deshaun was massage boy. Now, you're not going to get a fully guaranteed deal. And I think for Tua specifically... The way the deal is structured is probably going to matter more because of the injury concerns. How much guaranteed is he actually going to end up getting? Justin Herbert got $193 million guaranteed. Joe Burrow might approach $200 million. In light of the concussion stuff with Tua, I'm not sure he's going to get there even if he stays healthy the entire season. So... This is a big year for Tua. You know, they had the fifth-year option next year if they need it, then the franchise tag for up to two years. So there is time, but the longer you wait, assuming the guy plays well, the more expensive it ends up being. So is Tua the franchise quarterback for the Miami Dolphins? It is today's pinned comment, so go vote if the ad comes here on YouTube. Y for yes, N for no. From Carter Reimer, sign Quan Alexander. I'm not as in love with Alexander as others are. I thought he was better-ish last year. His best year in four years, because he was actually healthy for once. Uh, Alexander is an undersized athletic linebacker who's had some coverage success there. He was really good in Tampa, and this is one of those, hey, he got paid by the Niners and lasted a year and a half because he just wasn't good enough for them. Uh, so I'm not over the moon about trying to throw some money at Quan Alexander. You brought in uh, David Long. You have Jerome Baker. Alexander, at best, would be linebacker three. And I want to give Channing Tindall a chance and instead of just like one year of you know not playing very much. So I'd probably pass on Alexander, unless there are injuries. From Michael Tapp, Ben Jones is still available. He is still available. Uh, he's a, I think he's a center option. I don't think he'd be able to play guard, but you could just kick Connor Williams out there. I think he'd be fine. Uh, ben Jones played pretty well last year. A sack allowed, two hits, seven hurries, a 70, almost 74 uh, PFF run grade. All of that goes into this consideration of, okay, offensive line play around the NFL is bad. So why hasn't anyone picked him up yet? Uh, their injury problems last year, age. I think there's a general concern of how much he really has left in the tank. The Dolphins also did pay Dan Feeney a... a not insignificant amount of money. He might be one of your top backups on the interior as a center guard combination piece. I'm always down to look for more offensive linemen, especially in Miami. Well, it's, it, it is a league-wide thing, but that's, that's a question they'll have to sort out here you know, throughout training camp in the preseason. When it comes to free agents, who do you guys want to sign? Sound off in the comments section with any free agent available who you want to add to the Miami Dolphins. From Viz Stratus, how many carries will Devon A-Chain get? You know, it's also a really good question. A lot of this depends on what else happens, if anything happens, at the running back spot in terms of potential roster moves. A-Chain was never really, and I wouldn't expect him to be, a 
massive, you know, workhorse, 250-pound player. But if you look at some of the other third-round picks, even just dating back to last year, previous years, those day two selections, you know, Tyrion Davis-Price barely played. Rashad White had 129 carries. You know, Brian Robinson at 205. So you can have third round guys get, get touches. I'd say maybe the Rashad White role, somewhere in that, you know, he had almost 170 total touches. Maybe somewhere like 150 over under touches is like still pretty high because you have Raheem Mostert and Jeff Wilson. That number drops if you add a veteran back, such as a Dalvin Cook. Uh, but if it's just Wilson, Mostert, and, and A-Chain, I wouldn't be shocked if he took over kind of later on in the year, had a big-time breakout. So maybe 150 is an optimistic touch number. Maybe it's more like 120, but I think if you can get 100, probably means he earned those touches in the end. Folks, Tua gear is on sale. We've got jerseys. We've got signed helmets. We've got the jerseys, the shirt-jersey combo. It is available at chatsports.com slash Tua. It's a pretty easy URL, I think, to remember, even for someone with a mediocre mind like me. Check the comments section and the description of today's show. It's chatsports.com slash Tua, and that link is in there, comments, and the description. Not actual size for the helmet, although I guess you could make it actual size depending on what uh, screen you're looking at. It's one of the, the, the mini helmets. Go check them out. All the gear available, chatsports.com slash Tua. Nike Nintendo Master, uh, let me know your favorite Nintendo game in the comments. Who will be the starting running back for the Dolphins? I think the favorite is still Raheem Mostert. Now, we also must acknowledge this part. Mostert and Jeff Wilson, the two returning players at that position, are not exactly the healthiest guys out there. Uh, they often are a bit banged up for whatever reason, and this will be a committee approach this upcoming season for the Miami Dolphins. Mostert and Wilson over the course of last season had pretty similar numbers. You know, Jeff Wilson, five fewer carries, 31 fewer yards, nine fewer catches, and barely uh, 20 fewer receiving yards. Not even. More touchdowns somehow, by the way. There's also Devon A. Chain, the rookie, the new addition. And, of course, the still lingering rumors around Dalvin Cook. We'll see if and when he ends up signing. We'll, we'll see what happens uh, on, on that standpoint here. So prediction time. Who do you think will end up being RB1 for the Dolphins? JW for Jeff Wilson, RM for Raheem Mostert, DA for Devon A. Chain, or O for other bonus points if you comment who that other ends up being. From Zach Osinska, I think I got that right. If not, I'm terribly sorry, Zach. Will Cater Kohu be better than Xavier Howard this year, and will Tua stay healthy if Tron Armstead misses some games? Quick note on Tua. I think he'll has a he's a chance to. He's just the concussions are concussions. You land on the wrong on the head wrong. It is what it is. Get that ball out quickly. It's not just up to Armstead for Tua to stay healthy, but it will it will help. Um, the numbers last year, knowing X played on the outside, Caterco who played on the inside, so it's normally shorter passes. That, that's why the yards are fewer, despite uh, you know more uh, more targets towards Kohu there. This was a down year for Xavier Howard from a stats perspective. I would also say the defensive scheming uh, was maybe not the best for the Miami Dolphins. I think in the Vic Fangio scheme, things will be on the upswing for Xavier Howard. I do think it's fair to say Caterco is a very promising young player. I still think Howard will be better, and that's not a knock on Cater Kohu, but I think we'll get back to a bit more of the prime Xavier Howard from a statistical numbers output perspective uh, than maybe what we got this past season. Who do you think, though, will end up being better? Type in your Ks for Cater Kohu or throw up the X in the comment section for Xavier Howard. Go vote for me right now. RS Swimmer 84 Our linebacker position is incredibly deep. How many will we end up keeping on our roster, and what are some battles to watch out for? I assume you're grouping both off-ball linebacker and, and outside edge rusher linebacker here. It's a good, it's a good question. Um, you have Jalen Phillips, Jerome Baker, David Long, Bradley Chubb. I think those are four roster locks. I, I want to say Andrew Van Ginkle is a, a pretty safe option. Emmanuel Ogba can play some edge too, by the way. Malik Reed is there. You, you know, Cameron Good was a... You know, he, Team last year to a certain extent. Duke Riley's there as the veteran. I kind of like Aubrey Miller as UDFA, and 
Channing Tindall is also out there, you know, as a candidate right now to maybe be a better player than what we saw in a very limited, he wasn't ready sample size last season. So we, we did do a roster projection. You can always check that out. Other battles to watch for, a lot of the offensive line spots, at least the depth battles there. I think wide receiver three, the running back room position, and yeah, I think maybe safety potentially. Maybe Deshaun Elliott versus Brandon Jones. I, th I think it's Jones, but you know we'll see how Jones recovers fully and if Elliott can make a big splash this year. So lots of spots. Oh, punter. Forgot about punter. They are, they are more, more important than kickers in my mind. Uh, at least they're people. Well, those are some battles to watch, and we will keep you guys covered all throughout Dolphins camp.